got too political? My bad. I just don't know if I'll be able to own a credit card without my husband's permission in seven days. With the election just days away, TikTokers are losing their minds and spreading viral lies to millions of people. We're going to break down this crazy story and so much more on today's episode of the Brad vs. Everyone podcast, my daily show where I take on the craziest ideas from across the internet and across our politics, all from an independent perspective. So up first today, we've got to tackle this ultra viral video. It's already received nearly 5 million views in just 24 hours, featuring a ton of left-wing TikTok influencers teaming up to explain why it's so important that they get politically active right now and spreading some insane conspiracy theories and misinformation in the process. Let's take a listen. Oh, I got too political? My bad. I just don't know if I'll be able to own a credit card without my husband's permission in seven days. What? Oh, did I get too political? My bad. I just don't know if I want to get rid of overtime in seven days. Oh, I've gotten too political? My bad. I just want to make sure I have access to birth control in seven days. Oh, I got too political? My bad. I guess I don't know if I'm going to be a U.S. citizen in seven days. Oh, I got too political? My bad. I'm just worried I won't be able to love who I love in seven days. Oh, did I get political? My bad. I just don't want my mother to be denied her health care because she has a pre-existing condition. Oh, I'm being too political? My bad. I'm just fighting for the future of my daughter. Oh, I got too political? My bad. It's just that I don't know if my family in Western North Carolina will be warned of the hurricane coming in seven days when the National Weather Service is gone. Oh, I got too political? My bad. I don't want them to start rounding up immigrants to deport in seven days. Oh, I got too political? My bad. The only reason I have a daughter is because of IVF. Oh, I got too political? I just don't really want J.D. Vance tracking my periods in seven days. Oh, I got too political? My bad. I don't want Trump to take over the Board of e Education, put in his lackeys, his loyalists, and have y'all continue to think that Puerto Rico is not a part of America. Open the schools. Maybe people think you guys are too political because you have no idea what you're talking about when it comes to politics. So people just want you to shut up and stick in your regular influencer lane or whatever. I mean, this is so funny because they're saying in seven days, like talking about the election. But even if Trump won the election, he wouldn't take power until January 20th when he would be inaugurated. Biden would still be president until then. So the whole seven days thing, why it might be kind of a gimmick, is literally untrue. <laughs> Yet not just the framing of this video and its multiple multi-million viral message is wrong, but also almost all of the specific claims are untrue or exaggerated. And we're going to go through them one by one. Oh, I got too political? My bad. I just don't know if I'll be able to own a credit card without my husband's permission in seven days. First, literally nobody is taking women's ability to get credit cards without their husband away. Like, you just made that up. That's a lie. <laughs> and you're discrediting some of the real concerns that people have about some Republicans' views or comments about women by just pushing made-up nonsense to millions of people. Oh, did I get too political? My bad. I just don't know if I want to get rid of overtime in seven days. And Trump does not have any plan to get rid of mandatory time and a half for overtime. That's just not true. There is some limitations to mandatory overtime pay, although not an elimination, in Project 2025, the Heritage Projects. The Heritage Heritage Foundation's visionary plan, but Trump has repeatedly condemned that plan and has never endorsed that specific idea anywhere himself. In fact, he's actually campaigning on no taxes on overtime, which would mean that people who work overtime would get more take-home pay. Oh, I've gotten too political? My bad. I just want to make sure I have access to birth control in seven days. The birth control one is kind of complicated. I don't think anybody's really talking, at least mainstream Republicans, Trump, Vance, aren't talking about taking away the birth control pill. It does get complicated on things like the day after pill. There's some people who don't support some forms of IUD access. And of course, when you get into actual abortion regulation, they are trying to strictly regulate that. But most of that energy and that action is actually happening at the state level and would likely continue regardless of who wins the presidency. And I think the Trump Vance position on these issues is a lot more moderate than this video is implying. Oh, I got too political, <laughs> my bad. I guess I don't know if I'm gonna be a US citizen in seven days. And Trump is not going to revoke the citizenship of actual US citizens willy-nilly. He couldn't do that even if he wanted to legally. Now he is trying to get rid of birthright citizenship. The fact that in America, if you're born here, you're automatically a citizen. And that's a conversation for another time, but he also 
probably can't actually go through with that because legally, I think you'd run into trouble and it would only be going forward. It wouldn't apply to current citizens. Remember guys, Trump was president once and the only time he ever went after anybody's citizenship was in rare cases where, for example, they committed very serious crimes as naturalized US citizens or there was some reason to believe they committed fraud and lied in their application process to become a citizen. But by and large, he didn't just revoke people's citizenship and there's no reason to believe he would a second time around or that if he tried to, he would be allowed to by the courts. That's just hysteria and fear mongering. And again, it detracts from the very real conversations and debates to be had about a lot of Trump's positions on immigration when you just push this hysterical nonsense. Oh, I got too political? My bad. I'm just worried I won't be able to love who I love in seven days. And I rolled my eyes so hard I might have given myself brain damage with the, I won't be able to love who I love in seven days one. Give me a f break. Trump is literally fine with gay people. He supports gay marriage. He hosted a freaking gay wedding at Mar-a-Lago this year. And in his first presidency, he didn't do anything to stop people from loving who they love. Like he does not care about that. You can say so many things about this man, but the idea that he's going to restrict gay people from being gay is just absurd nonsensical it's false did i get political my bad i just don't want my mother to be denied her health care because she has a pre-existing condition the one about obamacare and eliminating protections for people with pre-existing conditions is a little complicated i think trump does at least in the past has supported getting rid of obamacare as have many republicans and that's a complicated conversation for another day because there's tons of problems with obamacare and it really hasn't worked out very well but i do think that if they had to go if they do go forward with some sort of removal, they're going to have some sort of plan for people with pre-existing conditions, because that is an important thing that people in both parties do want to protect. I would be shocked, and I really don't think it will happen, that they just screw over those people and leave them fending for themselves. Highly doubt that one. Oh, I got too political? My bad. It's just that I don't know if my family in Western North Carolina will be warned of the hurricane coming in seven days when the National Weather Service is gone. And the thing about hurricane forecasting is again, a Project 2025 narrative. They keep claiming that Project 2025 is going to eliminate the Department of the Federal Government that warns people about natural disasters like hurricanes. Even PolitiFact has fact check this and found this not to be true. Again, Trump doesn't even support Project 2025. So there's really no reason to believe he would actually do this. But even the actual Project 2025 document calls for downsizing that department and outsourcing some of its functions to private companies who might do it more efficiently. But nobody's trying to get rid of important warnings for people uh, that hurricanes are coming. No matter what, that will still be provided in some form. Oh, I got too political? My bad. I don't want them to start rounding up immigrants to deport in seven days. As for this whole notion about rounding up immigrants, they're doing this very frustrating thing that they often do, progressive types, where they say immigrants when the truth is illegal immigrants. Yes, Trump wants to do mass deportation of illegal immigrants, people without documents who are here in this country unlawfully. And I actually don't support that. I've talked about this before. I think we should deport people who've committed serious crimes or welfare fraud, but then the rest, we should find a pathway to legal status while securing our border and stopping the flow. But it is not crazy, insane, or dystopian to deport people from your country who aren't supposed to be there. I mean, Obama deported millions of people and they weren't calling him a fascist. Now, were they? So again, I, I find the hysteria about this and the dishonest framing as if he's going to deport legal immigrants, which he's not and, and he couldn't just do. Totally disingenuous. And again, more fear mongering distracts from legitimate debate to be had over the merits of his actual position, which I do find uh, lacking in the actual specifics and details. Oh, I got too political? My bad. The only reason I have a daughter is because of IVF. And the whole IVF thing runs into a similar problem where both Trump and Vance literally say they support IVF. Trump is even saying he wants free taxpayer funded IVF. Under the Trump administration, your government will pay for or your insurance company will be mandated to pay for all costs associated with IVF treatment, fertilization for women.
And yet this person in this viral video to millions of people is telling them Trump's going to take away your IVF. Like, do they know what they're saying is wrong and they just don't care and they're lying? Or, or are they just so deeply ensconced in echo chambers and ideological bubbles that they actually think that's what Trump believes? I, I honestly don't know. Oh, I got too political? I just don't really want J.D. Vance tracking my periods in seven days. And yeah, the whole thing about J.D. Vance tracking your periods is more hysteria and nonsense. Like, give it a rest. I got too political. My bad. I don't want Trump to take over the Board of ed Education, put in his lackeys, his loyalists, and have y'all continue to think that Puerto Rico is not a part of America. Open the schools. And I laughed out loud at the influencer who said, Trump's going to stack the Board of Education. She meant the Department of Education. She literally doesn't even know what federal agency she is talking about. Yet she's lecturing us about being uneducated and Republicans having bad ideas about education. Babe, look in the mirror. And the fact that she's saying open the schools, and that's why Americans, some at least, don't think Puerto Rico is part of America. First off, I never want a Democrat to tell me open the schools after so many of their Democratic governors kept schools closed at the behest of teachers unions for far too long during the pandemic and attacked Republicans who were sticking their neck out there and opening schools. Never say that again to me because it is absolutely maddening and hypocritical. And two, the public schools are open and people are still coming out pretty ignorant by and large. So maybe, just maybe, the Republicans actually have a point and we need to try school choice as an alternative. <gasps> Bar. Now look guys, I'm not telling anybody who to support in the election or more broadly. I just want people to make informed decisions that are based in reality and based in the positions that people actually hold. Not fake news and hysterical fear porn spread to millions of people on TikTok. And it's so deeply ironic and maddening to me that Democrats and progressives are constantly complaining about misinformation. And yet, honestly, Libs on TikTok and woke people online are some of the biggest purveyors and spreaders of misinformation and fake news in all of American life today. These people, they give info wars and Alex Jones a run for their money. Now, the conspiracies and fake news looks different and sounds different. It often sounds more polished. It often receives fewer fact checks because mainstream media fact checkers are incredibly biased, both in how they fact check and what they fact check. But that doesn't change the fact that it's still deeply misleading and not true. And guys, ignore all of this hysteria. OK, from the woke TikTok people, but also from some people like Elon Musk, who are claiming that if Kamala wins, it will be the last election ever. She is a communist. America will never recover the same way they're saying like seven days to save democracy or our country dies. None of this is true. No matter who wins, our country will be OK. We have a resilient nation with strong institutions that has if you zoom out a little bit and you look at it through a historical lens, has gone through some crazy shit, some far more intense shit than even what we're dealing with now. And I want you all to just, if you get one takeaway from this, it's to not believe the hype and not kid yourself for a minute that whichever way the election goes, America is somehow doomed or going to be destroyed. That's not true. They say that every time to scare you and get you to hand over more of your money and to do what they want, but it is not true. We're gonna be okay. Take a deep breath and try to tune out all the insane, crazy people saying absolutely fake and untrue things online. Anybody else? I just can't wait for this shit to be over and done with. I'm getting spammed with so many annoying, false and misleading ads constantly because I'm here in Michigan. It's just I can't wait for this whole thing to be over, honestly. But you let me know what you think about the election and about this TikTok misinformation in the comment section below. And do hit that like button while you're at it. Remember, guys, I do read the comments and I pick a few to respond to in every episode. So do leave your comment below. And if you leave your comment with a super chat or a super thanks, I'll definitely respond to it on tomorrow's show. Now, speaking of things that actually could destroy our country in the very long run, one of those things is the increasingly unhinged and incorrect view that Americans have about free speech, which is actually dangerous in some ways. We've got to break down some really concerning new polling data from the nonpartisan Foundation for Individual Rights and Expression, aka FIRE, which disclosure I do do a little bit of consulting work for, but they just released this really shocking poll that shows a stunning number of Americans seem to believe that words can be violence. 
They found that most Americans report thinking that, quote, words can be violence. They asked over a thousand people, a representative sample, how much, if at all, does the following statement describe your thoughts? Words can be violence. And 22% of Americans said this describes my thoughts completely, while 23% said that it mostly describes their thoughts. That means 45%, nearly one in two Americans, thinks words can be violence and thinks that strongly. Meanwhile, 23% said that it somewhat describes their thoughts and 12% said it slightly describes their thoughts. Only 20% said it does not describe their thoughts at all, which, spoiler alert, is the correct answer to this poll. In another interesting twist, Republicans, independents, and men were more likely to reject the idea that words can be violence, with 27% of men, 28% of independents, and 27% of Republicans saying it does not describe their thoughts at all, compared to only 14% and 11 of women and 11% of Democrats. And shocker, guys, Gen Zers, young people, were more likely to believe this nonsensical notion than older Americans, although older people believed it at kind of concerning rates as well. Gen Zers were also more likely to say that words are violence, fire reports, with only 12% of 18 to 24-year-olds rejecting the idea entirely. But seniors aren't far behind, with 16% of those older than 65 saying it doesn't describe their thoughts at all. Gen X is the most speech-supportive age group, with 32% of those between the ages of 45 and 52 completely rejecting the idea that words can be violence. Now, I have a lot to say about this disturbing polling result. But the first problem with this is that it's simply not true. Words are not violence. Just ask somebody who's been punched in the face if it's the same thing as someone insulting you or saying something nasty to you or deeply hurting your fifis. It's not. I mean, there's a reason that we teach kids, very young children, sticks and stones can break my bones, but words can never hurt me because this is a key distinction that there is a meaningful difference between physical violence and emotional or intellectual discomfort. These are not the same thing, and conflating them as the same is incredibly dangerous. For one, I mean, we already have a population that's just riddled, especially young people, with anxiety and depression, and now you're telling them that words are violence, and so guess what? They're going to see the world as an even more scary place than it already is. They're going to feel even more anxious and more depressed and more under attack. And it's only going to further fuel this disastrous mental health state that we have in so much of our population. And the third, I think, most consequential problem with this widespread belief that words can be violence is that it undermines the essence of a free society allowing for free speech, and allows radicals to justify political violence against people who say things they don't like. I mean, if words can be violence, who gets to decide? Maybe what's super offensive to the point of violence to you is not to someone else. And to somebody else, something totally innocuous to you is super offensive to the point of being a violent assault on their personal dignity. We cannot have a society, a free society where people speak their mind, a de democratic society or a republic where people have a say over their government and over the controversial issues of the day. We cannot have any of these things. If we allow people to start labeling speech as violence, because if they can label the speech they don't like as violence, well, guess what comes next? Well, actual violence is then justified in response to that speech. It's just self-defense at that point. If you go down that bizarre, dark school of thought and intellectual tunnel. So what we have here is a widespread belief that if it continues to grow and if it becomes ever embodied into our law, it is no exaggeration to say is a civilization-destroying belief. Once we allow words to be treated as violence, well, we invite violence in response to words at every turn. And once that starts happening, our country will eventually rip itself apart at its seams. So... I'm really deeply concerned about this poll's findings and the trajectory of free speech in this country more broadly on a social and cultural level. Our legal protections remain strong, but if the attitudes of the public change over time and the culture is eroded, it won't necessarily stay that way. What do you think of this poll and my take on it? 
let me know in the comments below. And now I already dealt with enough TikTok for today, so we're gonna skip our bread versus TikTok segment and go directly to reading a few of your comments before we wrap up today's show. One person writes, thanks, Brad, Biden used the word supporters, plural, not supporter, singular. Rewatch the video and utilize the closed caption option. I understand, but their argument is that he did say supporters with an S, but that there was an apostrophe after the supporter. So supporter apostrophe S as in it belonging to that individual supporter, that comedian who insulted uh, Puerto Rico. I Again, I don't know that I buy that, but I want to clarify that's the argument that they're making. They're not claiming he didn't say the S at all. This person also added, I showed my friend this video. After rolling her eyes, she said, this Halloween, I'm going to wear my regular clothes and go as a privileged white woman with no real life achievements that makes herself have self-worth by telling others what they can and can't do in the name of a cult called woke. <laughs> my friend is a white woman. That's funny. That cracks me up. I mean, oh gosh, I got so much feedback on that woke woman trying to ruin Halloween and that clip we discussed yesterday and I really I still can't believe that she's a hundred percent serious but she is another person just wrote thanks thank you for all that you do and I just want to say thank you for your support and for tuning in you guys make this show possible and are helping us grow so I really appreciate each and every one of you that's joining me for these conversations every day another person says if Brad could stop Disney from getting 20th Century Fox would he I would I'm sorry maybe I'm revealing my own ignorance or stupidity here but I don't know what this is supposed to mean. Is this like a, a supposed to be a Star Wars thing? I, I know I'm a nerd, but I guess I'm not a nerd enough to understand this comment. Sorry. <laughs> Another person writes, as a disabled person myself, I hate when woke people try to tell us what's ableist. Yeah, obviously I'm not disabled, but it seems like they have this view of disabled people that implies because they have some form of physical disability or even mental disability that they are so emotionally fragile and stunted and like these little toddlers that need to be protected and coddled. And it's kind of a con condescending view of disabled people who in my experience are usually very similar to everyone else and often very resilient, having a, overcome a lot in their lives and don't need to be coddled or sheltered or protected by these woke saviors who are just so generous and so kind and so eager to make sure you know it. Another person wrote, sat watching this five feet from my disabled mother. She has MS and uses a wheelchair and has very limited vision. She can hear the video and once the Halloween girl stopped talking, my mother loudly said, and I quote, oh, shut the F up and get a grip. <laughs> I could be wrong, but I don't think she agrees with the young lady. <laughs> Yeah, like I said, I don't think actual disabled people are asking you to police your visors and your eye contacts of your Halloween costumes. I think, frankly, a lot of them have bigger problems to worry about, bigger fish to fry in their lives, and they don't need to be coddled. They're resilient people who are just as capable of taking a joke or handling a costume somewhere as anyone else. Once again, the woke worldview just seems at times so patronizing and, and so condescending. I don't know how anybody finds it compelling at all. All right, guys, that's it for this episode of the Brad vs. Everyone podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please do make sure you're subscribed if you aren't yet and do hit that like button before you go. Plus, do comment with your thoughts on today's episode. I do read the comments and I pick a few to respond to in every episode. Plus, if you leave your comment with a super chat or a super thanks, I'll definitely respond to it on tomorrow's show. And with that, I'll see you tomorrow for a viral video Friday. And trust me, we got a good one coming up. Uh, what? <laughs>